Welcome back to an animation analysis, and this time it's Encanto again. It's the trailer this time. And I thought, I don't have any to do a second one, but then I went through it, and as you can see with all my bookmarks here, so mm, it's actually, again, a lot of really cool stuff in here. And this is going to be less reaction, as I'm sometimes prone to do, where I go like, oh, this is really cool. Even though, I mean, you can go through this, and you have like, something like this here. Like, this is really cool. Love that effect, love the lighting, everything's very, very neat. Now, I do have elements where I did have a mark, like for instance, this one here. If you watch this, what I like about this section, this is a good reminder for students, is that if you have movement in here, right, she's shaking left and right, this is going to affect the rest of the bodies, especially the things that are a bit looser. Looser, I mean, just kind of like a neck area where if you shake your arm, you're going to have shakiness in the head as well. So I don't want to actually delete all this and then miss my bookmarks. But if you just watch this, you can see how there's a slight little wobble in the head as well, which is coming from this. So this is why I've marked this, is if any student here is watching. Reminder that if you have something that's a strong shake, whatever it is, you can even have like a strong shoulder shake or chest shake. It's going to impact the rest of the body. And I've said this many, many times. It's probably an old hat for some of you, but... I'm always going to point that out because it's, I think, the connectivity is really nice. Where you have, besides, you know, like a little grouping, there's like the, the general polish, the asymmetry is always really good. It's Disney after all. But just as a mechanics reminder, I think this is really, really cool and important. This one, <laughs> I just had to include this one. It's because it's a nice pose. Like clearly, if you watch, this is the element here. Going over there is really fun. But I just loved that pose and I had to, you know, put that in there. This one, I kind of looked at it before in the teaser a while back, but I think it's a great reminder of exaggerated timing in terms of hang time and a bunch of stuff. I mean, this is a nice, again, a nice grouped hand pose. You have a lot of stretching in there. That's really cool. I like that transition into a different character, but I like that hold. You still have slight travel in here. The looser parts come up for sure. You can see the legs also in the cloth. And hold, hold, hold to do that moment here. And then it starts to drop, but it's so intentional where this is more like a pull down than a, a physics driven up and down. So if you are in that land of exaggeration, it's just really cool to see to have, bam, to have that in there. Even here, the amount of time for the landing to get out into that, I like that line for that, that push, you got that, hand, that compression feel of this through there and then going up into that. And I love that little shrug shoulder hand pose there it's just overall a really nice to go back in there and play this again it's basically we're back to bouncing balls right so if you watch this and go doing doing just really really nice we we'll like that moving forward this is again this is, i know this is supposed to be just analysis but i had to put that in there as well this is really cool i just love that how it overtakes the frame with the colors and everything else this one i thought was really neat in terms of the it's it's very fast if you watch this but if you go through it, you can see how it has a really nice anticipation into a nice arc. And then as we're done, this this slight stretch, if you watch that section through there, how it expands through there, and it comes back in. You can see here that whole line there, the circle, how it goes back. It kind of extends a little bit of a, a squash and stretch type of thing. You go, Phew! and it's very subtle. It's not huge, but that's why I included that there. Because even on something like this, you want to have enough, you know, kind of elastic feel, a bit of a squash and, uh, squash and stretch, but not too much. You don't want this to be a balloon, basically. Especially this section, that gets a lot more rigid, obviously. So that is, a, I thought it was a cool reminder, even in this here, as the character squashes it a little bit. Again, this is very, very small, but you got movement through all of these elements and then the widening through all of this. You got movement through all of there. It's like this. I like this one just because it's short, but everything is still there. It still works really well. And again, it's a reminder for any student watching this here. It's like, you might think this is a small shot, but even then you got to go in there and really take care of all the tiny little things. You got the little movement with the fingers here. If I'd be super picky, more, more tightening here. And especially on this, this is my, my super picky hat. But if you have this here and you let go and you get, weight on this and more compression i would have loved to see I and mean, i feel bad critiquing this because you know you never know what, what you know what this shot went through in terms of history and everything else but going over there tightening in here as you let go here some tightening in here just a little bit just a little bit anyway moving forward this one was nice too in terms of 
another short shot that you might feel like this is you know simple but it has so many little elements in terms of asymmetry even like does the slight droop in the shoulder also the costuming helps here for the asymmetry but it's it's one of those things where you feel like this is you know a smaller shot if you get this it's like a turnover like oh why why do i get this small shot you can still push this so many elements of squishiness and just kind of the the skin aspect that is not rigid like little things like that a little movement through there i'm talking about that a bit later some some other shots in terms of like the elastic feel of faces even through here you can see this later on actually i marked i thought i marked this one as well maybe just because it's right after but look at all of these corners you can see that as the jaw goes down the squishiness through there as this goes over here the corner you can see how all this is moving even to a point where even stuff in the ears so to me these two actually back to back i love this it's just making sure that again if you're a student and you have lip sync that you make sure that if you have changes through there especially if the jaw is opening to really consider how all of this is going to move same thing here if you have eyebrows how is this going to affect the lids and i would always go with the kind of wireframe on shaded so you can see what the topology is and so you can see which back vertices are not moving and i think that those two shots i just love how there's still enough care in all of these not that i would slum i'm not saying the animators but like yeah it's a small shot i'm not going to do anything but it's just a good reminder to me it's just as an animation student you should really look at even shorter shots like these what is going on in all of this like all the little shapes that are pushed you have a slight this you get a slight drop just even just on a short shot what you can do in terms of posing and on something like this the squishiness of the face this one i thought again the exaggerated timing of up and then drop where it's not physics driven you get an extra exaggerated hold but while it holds it still continues with the rotation you can see this in here with the legs and then it holds and then it drops down where it's more like a pull down but in this world of exaggeration it totally fits and it's just again a reminder of this is basically your bouncing ball assignment but taken one level above in terms of exaggerating the time the timing and kind of the physics of it this should just be i should do an fna about everything is a bouncing ball it's just everywhere then let me go back to all my bookmarks this one this one cracked me up because again in a, in a fast move of that hand the care of finger poses right so as we transition back into the simplified triangular shape classic always good to have and then as it goes into this you get kind of the the classic a lot of female characters have this kind of pose where it gets the middle finger grouping but and you got it here as well but even on something like this just it's a it's a small moment through there but again a lot of care and then the same thing again what i showed before when you have movement before that it was the wave here but this is kind of that is kind of the driver it's a little bit of hand you know jazz hands type of things with the head but I love the the wiggle aspect. I don't know if it's a technical term, but I love how there is. If you just watch shoulder area, chest, head, I'm basically I don't know, I'm saying I watch everything. It just has a really nice rhythm and feel of the shakiness and just the timing of that that little hand coming up. It's really nice, and even here as the grouping gets smaller through there, it's just again it's like a lot of really nice care in terms of like subtle body mechanics that you shouldn't underestimate. And I just notice that i deleted my drawing which means that i just deleted all my bookmarks no but since i watched this i can go through this anyway this one i love that little shake at the end watch that head turn and then that little extra thing you got the general turn into that the little extra thing i love that gives it less it's, it's more than just a move now you're getting into a slight attitude to that which is really neat this one I have bookmarked because of the eating. Again, something else that I feel is, I mean, it's tricky because you got to do it. Uh, it's very specific in terms of frame by frame shape work, depending on what you have. You know what I mean? Like this could be whatever you're going to eat. But what I like this, and as a reminder for students, do not underestimate eating. There's so much you can do in, in terms of pushing shapes. You can see how much this goes from here to here. And then the chewing aspect, you can see here, just pushing your shapes beyond the default and having nice, squishiness you can see this here the pull in the nose you get a nice line of action in the head here i think it's just something that is, is underused there's even a swallow which is rare dare i say there's never that much swallow in movies but just generally really well done besides all the nice lip sync and and you know the nice again 
simplified handshape. There's a lot of really great stuff. But my main thing was do not underestimate the fun of animating someone eating and chewing. This one I bookmarked because it was right after as well. But it's in terms of how, when she ends here, you can see the shape language of this pointing that way, this that way. So you have a really nice opening of that face towards this character. It's a simple thing, but something that's used a lot. I like this as well here, the interaction between this. Simple things, but it goes into the fingers first. And you can see how this cups it here and then has a slight raise and turn. Subtle stuff, but I love all this. Again, the care into every frame is really, really neat. And even this here, you have a nice rounded shape in terms of, of that grouping there, which is really nice. Good thing I marked those bookmarks right before, so I remember where I had it. This one for sure. This one was really neat in terms of eight of the push poses. I love how he comes in. I mean, I know if that shot is long in the movie, but I love that coming in and that slide and pivot off of here. So it pivots off of this, but it still has so much momentum. It's also a bigger person in terms of the weight and the momentum. You got a slight slide in that, even in this foot a little bit. And then as this stops, because it's all pointing this way, if, if the feet were down here, or the legs straight down, it would be so much more difficult to come to a rest like this. So I love that it's angled this way because he goes this way and these have to be angled this way to stop that. And how it comes to a stop, I love this. This rests while the rest overshoots. I know he wants to go and grab the kit, but it's just a nice one, two, three stop into this. And then taking enough time for the reversal into a push off, into a full extension. Look at this. And then that, that move back into, again, he doesn't want, he's totally off balance and he doesn't want to fall. So then this leg goes really far back. Again, he goes this way and this leg is pointed this way to stop the move this way. Now this in real time, watch this. Has a really nice rhythm, but there's so much in there in terms of C curve, reverse you got your full extension you got balance it's just so much in there and it's really cool i really like that one there's another shot that's so much more simple much more simpler english <laughs> that is actually my favorite shot but i love this one in terms of the physicality of it the next one that i have bookmarked was this one and just because i talk a lot about sets and props and i love that the character is somewhat leaning and then using it's kind of darky but she's putting her hand here a slight push off a little kind of rebalancing and a push off to go this way. It has also really nice up and down, watch the mechanics of all of this here, and that move, it's really nice. There's a lot of really cool rhythm stuff in this trailer. But I had to bring it up just because I love this interaction with sets. She lives here, you know I mean? Like it's, you have your character and you put your character within a set, you might as well use it, show how familiar they are and just their interactions. So it's not so that, that sterile, you know, like CG thing of here's a character and this could just be whatever, like, you know, like a CG thing of, there's, there's nothing in there. I'm not saying there's a painting, but there's some camera move in there. But I just like that the character lives in this world that interacts in there. It's also a nice little slide there. You do that weight. It's great. And actually right after, which I remembered that I bookmarked here, was this. Look at that turn. I love this here. It has a nice arc. And I know it's like, okay, it's an arc. And so what? Well, yeah, I'll have a lot of classes that start it now. And you have to remind students of arcs. And even this here, how she comes up into that slight hold. It's not like you don't have an arc with like a little, little flourish there or coming or overshooting, coming back. It just has a nice clean arc. And I love the the changes here. You can see here how lids go first with a slight pull on the brows, close into a little squash, but you still have a look like this. And then it opens up with this eye first and that eyebrow to a much bigger asymmetrical shape here where we end up with, again, that triangle pointing to where she's looking so as a seasoned animator you might go simple yeah of course you could do that but that's not the point of this analysis this is for students who are watching this something like that it's just it's just nice and clean it has a really nice rhythm i love that that change it just flows really nicely and even on the move like this it's not just the head so i have to remind students a lot that it's on head turn like this involve the body as well she goes from here to a slight move over there. And because of that, there's gonna be a slight change in that arm. And with that, you can see there's a slight hand finger change here, which is also great. Even this arm goes in a bit. So it's not just here. So if you would tell a student to do a head turn, 
I can guarantee you a big portion of students would just do the head and not think all the way down to finger changes. And this is why a shot like this, I wanted to include that. It's just really neat and clean. This one is not really animation related. I just want to take a look at this frame by frame just because I love it. <laughs> it's just, I know, now this goes borderline into uh, reaction again, but I'm a big fan of simulation and destruction stuff. So whenever I see something like this, I go, wow, this is really cool. I love all this here. And of course, the mechanics of all that, how she gets propelled forward, clean posing here with the legs. I don't know, this, as you can always see really cool stuff, but I, I wanted to just look at this for myself. Next, I was actually the shot fairly right after is this here. On something like this, that's really crazy in terms of body mechanics. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening. I love going through this frame by frame. And again, that's something that I, re I highly recommend a lot of students do. Just take a shot like this and you can see this is shooting up. You got a drag in the, <clears throat> in the hands and then the shoulder, the shoulder, the elbow goes up first and it gets that nice little drag through there and then it stops and then the arm continues into a drop like this. You might even have a little bit of stretch in the fingers, maybe a little bit. But you can see the exaggeration in the face as well when it goes <gasps> really big. It's got your stretch moment right there yeah, into the drop. And then you can see as it lands here, you're going to have compression through there. There's a slight compression in the head. There's a compression down on that wrist and then back up. So watch, just watch her. Doom. It just all feels really nice. And even through all of that, you still have the performance of <gasps> what's going on or what's over there because then he is reacting and doing all that stuff. So this to me would be a really cool variation, potentially. It's like a, a sit down, get up, back to a sit down. But the mechanics are just really nice. And then this guy, look at this here. Besides nice hand poses, as always. And see this here again, it goes from here to here. Look at that shape change there, which is really nice. Pop into a different character, but it flows nicely in terms of the spacing. And then there's the shape here, this is great too. Even here, look at that, again, a little drag in the fingers, just the shapes there. You can see how much is going on in terms of a stretch, despite the blur. And you can see here, love there. That little nice grouping of the fingers, big exaggerated shapes. You might potentially even see underneath, but it's moved. So it's just, just the white here and that. It's a nice graphic shape of the mouth. Again, something like this, that's this um, complex and just kind of very mechanics driven, body mechanics driven. Any student watching, I highly recommend you just go through that frame by frame. I even love when you have this. Yeah, you can see this here. Look at that, how the legs have that little stomping. It's just really cool. That, I mean, as an idea, is also really cool to have your character transition between different types where you can have a lot of fun in terms of how they transition and the way it changes and all that. It's just really cool. It's a cool shot. Then there's this one. And this is, to be honest, my favorite shot. I know it sounds really weird, but watch the weight of the kid's head. Boom. I love this. I know there's so much else in this trail that's really cool, but there's a certain amount of weight. Bang. And I love what else is going on on that drop. How this goes down, a little squishiness and a little softness in there. You got, you got like all the little details all around. You can see when she moves over, the changes, the change in the thumb. And you can see that impact, how bang, it makes her blink. You can even see a little squishiness in the in the cheek as the head compresses behind that cheek line, but it moves that forward. There's a lot to love about this, but the weight, it just feels really, really nice. I know it's silly. There's a lot of cool stuff in it, but when this came up, ah, oh, that feels good. It's just really, really nice. This one actually I have bookmarked as well, but not because of the animation. It's because of just the look. This is really neat. Love this, especially this. It's a really nice shot. This one I had, again, because of attention to detail. So a lot of times students, when they have whatever, you know, pose of this could be creature, human, whatever it is, mostly humans, when they look somewhere, you know, maybe here, a bit down here, and you have a dart like this, a lot of times, if it's a held pose like this, maybe someone is, you know, <gasps> and it looks around, a lot of times it's just the eyeball moving. And I like that you got that squishiness through there. It's, it's this ball is moving around the lid, the mass here, the skin, everything. Even this has a little bit of a raise up there. I just really like this, how just that there's still stuff being affected. So when you have this eyeball moving, think of all of this radiating out. How is this going to, uh, going to affect the rest of, you know, whatever creature character you have? It's like when I talk about mechanics of an arm, you would lift this arm over this way. You would have shoulder, scapula, everything. Everything would be moving, including a little bit of weight shift of the body. 
just always think about this when you have anything. This could be an eyeball. This could be something with the jaw. Be mindful of what one part means in terms of like the influence of the rest of the of whatever. Like I said, creature or, or human. It's also really cute there. Oh, into that face. This one actually I remember having bookmark because of a cool frame. Really nice, clean silhouette. Love all of this. Like all of this is really nice too. Even like that that tour. I love how the sword goes down. If you look at the spacing. And then comes back. Either she hit part of the leg, or it's kind of like the the swinging overshoot. Because this wrist, at one point, is going to stop rotating. Just from an anatomical point of view, you can't keep rotating this. So you got that swing of the sword. But then this is, you know, muscles and tendons and everything. It's not a stone block, so it's going to overshoot. And then kind of the elasticity of all this is going to have the sword come back. So watch this in real time. And doing just comes back a bit. Could also be a slight loosening, right? Because you do that big turn. And then she tightens again. And that's why you have a little bit, that one frame move over there. So think about that as well in terms of if I move something, like if you have an object, how is this going to, like a rotation of it? How is this going to influence the body structure? Like how far can you go with the rotation? If you move that arm over, how far can you go with that arm? Yes, you can break things in terms of cartooniness and, you know, like a nice pose and everything. But still... There are still limits even within a stylized world. It's really it's just cool to see all the attention to detail like that. And actually, let me go. I was, I was going to find my other bookmark that I lost, but then it goes straight to this. And this was the shot right there. I love that the rhythm of this here. Ready? And I love that. And again, the shapes. It starts off in a cool pose. I remember this here. It's nice. I love that. Shoulders up. All like that. You have a nice little up and then down. And that. I had that immediate reaction of shoulders up it's almost like the body has like this like a, a survival instinct that kicks in where it's not the face where she would blink and look down of oh what just happened the body kicks in right off the bat like going oh, there's something that is dangerous i gotta get out of there and then she looks i don't know if that was the intention of the animator but i love it i love that that's what there is now into really nice posing nice shape i love this here that drop again all the weight is on here bah, into that and then this happens, so she has to go out the other way. You can see that, that drag. You can see that in the hands into a nice shape through there. You can see because of the skirt, but it's a nice full extension. You need that on the push off into this. And I love how it goes over there. And then she has a slight slide and fall. And I don't know if that shot is going to be long in the movie where she would bang, go down. Imagine she would continue. This would lock to some degree. You would push up the shoulders so the chest would rotate this way. There would be some impact in the head. Just really cool. I'm always a big fan of really nice, clean, stylized body mechanics. It's really cool. There's so much in that's cool. Even here, when you have a push off, you don't have an IK arm where this is just locked. You can see how the forearm moves and that rotation changes all of this. Now she pushes off. Because imagine she's not, she doesn't have a flat hand where you would have compression. Thumb and fingers, it would compress in. Here, it's just this section. But you still have to have a, a tension a tightness of this where this is pushing her off and you can see here watch this high tightens in the fingers there's compression and tightness in there as she pushes herself oh it's great i know it's like you can i didn't have this bookmark but you can literally go frame by frame on anything i love this like the shape of all of this the facial expressions are great so much here i think that's the end and then she has yeah and that's the end there actually i had this bookmark just because again props Generally, if a student would have something like this, and I'm generalizing a lot, I'm not saying every student does this, but a lot of them, if they would say, all right, well, the character says something to this character, you know, act something out and show me your first blocking. I guarantee you there was, would be a big amount of students that would have this arm point, either, you know, like, like this, there might even be a bit of a W thing, or they might maybe even lean over and point this way. And I like that this is here. Again, I, and I go on and on and on about props. But what this prop does is that she holds on to this and she can still point, but it's still, she's still holding on to this. Watch this. It's a nice point. It reads, it's a nice color silhouette in front of the shirt, but you still get the point in there, but it's still combined with this. And this is why I like props and sets. Like you can, you can take your initial idea and then tweak it where it combines something like this. It could be something with whatever you have, whatever, like a set piece or something. So it's kind of a variation of a point that still gets the point across, but in a, in a different way. And I think that was the last one that I had. I think so. Because then flies off. 
Although she has a really funny face at the end, though. If you watch the end, where is it? There. <laughs> it's a good face there. Nice compression. I don't know. Again, holding all this. I love all this. But that was that. I don't think I missed anything. Again, I did those bookmarks right before the recording. So I believe I remembered everything. Once again, for anybody watching this, take any trailer. And I'm going to do probably the mind of three. And I have such a, a long list of trailers I want to look at. But you can really go through everything. Even this. I didn't, I didn't stop on this one. But you have those characters. They're here, right? This suddenly drops. So what would happen? Physically, arms would go up. They do. Cloth goes up for the drag. That's what happens. And then on the drop, it's not crazy harsh because she does take care of them. But as they boom, as they land, you can see the impact here. Head goes down, hair goes down, arms go down, and she has a slight boop, boop, move over to the left. So at any point, you can take a look, take a look at a, at a shot, and you can go frame by frame and look at hand poses. So any student watching, I highly, highly recommend you go into anything, a movie or a trailer, and go frame by frame. Look at poses, lines, finger changes. There's so much you can learn from this. So for me, yes, I'm posting this on my channel, but selfishly, this is also for me. Like, I love this. It's great that we actually end on this here. The weight of this is great. So for me, I'm going to mentally bookmark this. And there's a high chance I will go back to this trailer later on and then study this. Go frame by frame. Like, how did they do this? Why does it feel so nice? Where's the compression point? And so on and so on. So as much as I post this online and hopefully it's helpful for people, this is so selfishly for me as well. And this is why I'm doing these and the act analysis tips because, uh, again, I just I benefit from all the awesomeness that, that you see in, in trailers and movies. But enough rambling. Let me end on, I don't know, maybe this guy. This guy's funny. It's a great queen post too. So let me end on this. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're still watching, this is probably around 25 minutes. Eh, I want it to be shorter, but it ended up being a bit longer. But anyway, if you're still watching this, thank you as always. Thank you for your patience. And uh, the usual pitch, like and subscribe. You know how it goes. This is YouTube. But that's it. Thank you for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in my next clip.